Hey guys, welcome back to the shop. Well, this week's project is a steam box. We're going to be building a simple steam box so we can do some wood bending here in the future. I've got a couple of projects in mind that I want to do, but they require wood bending. Now, in order to kind of expedite my process so I can get to the bending more so than the building, um, I went ahead and purchased a simple steam bending kit from Rockler. First thing I'm going to do is I've got two of my boards I'm going to set aside. They're going to be my top and my bottom. They are already seven and a quarter inches wide, four foot length, so they're done. Now I need to go ahead and rip down my sides, uh, and I'm going to rip them down to five and three quarters in width, and they're already cut down to their four foot in length. Now that the two sides are cut to width, I've got them laying side by side here because I'm making marks on them every five inches and I want the marks to be identical on both sides. What we're going to do here is we got to drill some holes uh, for some dowels and there's going to be dowels that extend from one side to the other that uh, will help raise our strips of wood or whatever we're, we're steaming off of the bottom of the box. It will allow that steam to go all around those pieces of wood. So what I basically did is I went, started from one end off three inches and then made a mark and then from there every five inches. With my fence set up on the drill press, it will ensure all my holes will be in line. All I have to do is make sure that I land on the crosshairs. Alright, now that I have one of the sides screwed to the bottom, I'm going to go ahead and set my other side in place and I'm going to determine a measurement. I'm going to get a measurement for how long I need to cut my pieces of dowel stock down to. When it comes to the dowels, as I said, I'm using 3 quarter inch dowels and I am not going to be gluing them into the holes that I pre-drilled in both sides. With all that heat, steam, and moisture that's being generated, I want things to be able to expand and contract and be able to move freely. So I'm definitely not going to glue these into place. Alright, I've installed all the dowels into the side that I don't have screwed on yet. And the biggest challenge of this box is going to be making sure all of the dowel holes line up and getting them into place at the same time. Too bad. Now that I have everything pressed into place, I can go ahead and flip it over and screw the other side down. Now I'm going to make sure when I screw the other side down that everything is in line uh, before I set the screws and uh, then we'll get the uh, top side on. Alright, basically what I'm doing is I'm taking the clamps and kind of pressing the sides in until they're flush with the top and then I'm working my way down pre-drilling and screwing these holes. Once I have all of them screwed together, then I can flip it over and put the top on. Okay, well here's the box with the sides screwed on. These dowels, as I said, they're going to act as a riser. So when I take my strips and I put them in this box, they're going to lift them up off the bottom of the box so the steam can generate all the way around them uh, and get good penetration and stuff. So that's the only purpose for the dowels. The clamps on the box, all they're doing is they're just lining everything up and uh, keeping everything in line while I pre-drill and screw. Since there is no glue, there's no clamping required. All they are are just some extra hands for me. All 
All right, guys, so there is the box. That's the basic instruction. Now we need to go ahead and work on the back and the front. Now the back and the front, uh, the back is where the steam hose is gonna go into. It's also where the condensation, the water that builds up into the box, where it's gonna run out of. So on that back panel, we're gonna drill a hole for that water to run out of, and we're also gonna drill a hole for the hose to fit into, and all the fittings came with that kit. Now we're getting into the hardware part of the kit. On the rear panel, we need to go ahead and drill a 9 16 hole is what it recommends. I'm using a half inch bit here because I want to be able to thread in the brass fitting and have a snug secure fit. The brass fitting needs to be installed before the rear panel is screwed to the back of the box. Alright, so on the back side of the box where we just screwed the back into place, on the bottom where the bottom meets the back panel, I went ahead and drilled a small hole. Now I used a 7 seconds uh, drill bit for this to dr create like a condensation drip hole. Because the box is going to be built at an incline when we put the legs on it, that water, as the steam generates water and moisture and condensation and everything, it'll allow that condensation to run towards the back and drip out this little drip hole. Now as I said, I used a 7 seconds drill bit for this. If I find that the hole is not quite big enough for the condensation to drip out and everything, I'll increase it, but I didn't want to go too big to start with. All right, before we assemble the lid or put the lid on with the hinges and the hardware that actually came with the kit, the steamer kit, uh, the one thing that I did is I took some eighth inch uh, weather stripping, just regular weather stripping, and uh, I put it in here. Now on the, on, the, on the print, it shows the weather stripping on the door. I put it on the box here. Doesn't matter. All right, so now I can go ahead and get it in place. Now I haven't drilled the hole for the vent hole yet that goes at the top. I'll do that after I get the hardware on it. But now that I have this weather stripping and everything on here, I wanna just kind of press it down and seal it so when I get my hinges in place, I can uh, screw them on. So I'm just gonna Set the box up here, and uh, we'll get them screwed in place, get that door on, get the hardware on. Then we'll get some legs put on this thing, and I'm just going to say this, and I'll get to work. The front leg is going to be taller than the back leg, so the box sits at a small incline, so that condensation can roll out. I'll show you that in a second. Alright, so with the hinges on, we can go ahead and install the clasp, and this is the clasp that comes with the hardware. It's just a simple uh, latch clasp that has a little hook and everything, just quick and simple. Uh, one single one. I want to go ahead and get the hook part of it on the door, and then I want to position this to where when this clasp locks down, it's going to pull that door tight and seal it with that weather stripping and everything. screw in. So when the door is closed, this clasp can hook and you want it to be in a position where when it locks down it snaps. Uh, and that's going to pull it in and seal up that weather stripping real well. And that completes our box. Alright, with the box assembled, now I can go ahead and focus on the feet. In the plan that came with the kit, it called for the feet to be inset to a set of dados. A couple of dados cut on the uh, bottom of the box, and the feet fit right in there. Because the feet are cut out of the same stock as the size in, in, of the box. Well, I decided I didn't want to do that. I didn't want to cut dados, and I didn't want to do all that. I'm going to just use pocket holes and I'm going to pocket hole screw the feet on place. Quick and simple. So 
if I wanted to do dados, if you want to follow the plan, if you happen to buy this kit or whatever, cut your dados into your bottom piece before you assemble the box. Okay? All right. Over at the drill press, I've got one of the cutoffs from the box sides, as well as a four inch hole saw installed. This will allow me to drill a hole right in the center of this board that I can later split to create the two legs. Our steam box is nearly complete. We just have two more holes to drill. The first one is going to be at the top so that this thermometer can fit inside so I can regulate the temperature and this is just a standard meat thermometer. And the second hole is in the door close to the top and it's a vent hole. With those holes drilled, everything is complete. Now it's time to go ahead and set everything up. I went ahead and filled my reservoir to the maximum fill line, and I've got the hose here. The hose simply screws on to the front of the reservoir and falls all over the place. And with a lot of length, it gives you a little bit of mobility of where you can place this. And the other end of the hose hooks to the brass connector that we put in the back panel. So now with the hose connected, there's only one thing left to do, and that's a test run to see if I have any steam leaks anywhere that I may need to seal up. Now the reservoir, as I told you, I filled it up to its maximum water line, and I used hot water to fill it with to speed up the heating process. With everything ready to go, I can go ahead and plug that in. We'll get this thing steaming. As the temperature in the reservoir begins to heat up and steam begins to fill the box, we're already at 160 degrees and climbing. Now I'm going to continue to monitor the temperature as well as the box, checking for any problems or steam leaks. So far, so good. If the test is successful, we're good to go for a steam bending project next week's video. Well, that wraps up this video for this week. I hope you enjoyed it and thank you for sticking with me. If you happen to be new to the channel, please take a minute and subscribe. I put out a new woodworking project every week. As always, if you like the video, please leave a comment, give me a thumbs up. Well, until next week, guys, I'll see you soon. Oh, and hey guys, I've got some exciting news. Stay tuned for a follow-up, coming soon. So now with the hinges on, we can go ahead and put the clasps that come in the hardware, and it's basically just a... It won't open.